Hello. A few days ago, I um, discussed uh, using Excel to simulate uh, uh, heads, tails, equilibrium. And today I'd like to uh, continue along those lines, but treat it from more of a chemical point of view. Uh, let us imagine that we have a reaction, a one-to-one -one type reaction shown here, A going to B. Um, examples would be a cis-trans isomerization, ketoenol isomerization, something of that sort. Um, the rate constant for the A going to B we'll call Kf, <clears throat> and that for B going to A we'll call Kr, and the rate equations would be the change in the concentration of A per unit change in time is equal to minus Kf times the concentration of A, which is the rate at which A can converts to B in moles per liter per second, plus Kr times the concentration of B, that's the rate at which B gets converted to A per unit time. Uh, in a similar way, the change in the concentration of B per unit time will equal Kf times the concentration of A minus K. R times the concentration of B. I'm going to move delta T to the other side. Delta T is always going to be one second. So the change in the concentration of A each second will equal minus Kf times the concentration of A plus Kr times the concentration of B times one second. In a similar way, the change in the concentration of B after each second will equal Kf times the concentration of A minus Kr times the concentration of B. These two terms are equal but opposite in sign. Okay, as A goes to B, it decreases the concentration of A, but increases the concentration of B. And uh, as B goes to A, it increases the concentration of A, but decreases the concentration of B. And that's why there's the negative relationship between the two. All right, I'm going to start with the rate constants uh, of 0.01 and 0.01 seconds to the minus 1. So the, the, the rate constants are the same. The equilibrium constant should be 1. I'm going to start at 2 molar A and 0 B, and I want to show you how I program it. So let me remove what I have here. Because I want to just, it's very simple to program. So let me delete that. All right, now what will be the concentration of A after one second? Well, I'm going to say equals, it will equal what it was previously, minus Kf. Now I'm going to make this uh, cell constant by pressing, pressing F4. Kf times the concentration of A plus Kr, and I'm going to make that constant, times the concentration of B. And now I'm going to do the same thing for B. What will B be after one second? Well, it will equal what it was, plus Kf, make it constant times the concentration of A minus Kr, make it constant, times the concentration of B. Okay, now let's copy it, all this down. I'm going to go to 288 seconds. Okay, back home. And now <coughs> I'm going to show you what this looks like graphically, so I'm going to bring the graph in. It's very easy to graph. Okay, um, the blue line is the concentration of A versus time, and the um, red line is the concentration of B versus time. Since B started at zero, it, it builds up and A decreases, and they become the same at equilibrium. And that you would expect from a one-to-one -one equilibrium. Now if you start it with 0a and 2 molar b, you get the same thing, only now you start with b and the b decreases from 2 to 1 molar and the a increases from 0 to 1 molar. Now let's see what happens if we make um, the rate constant for A going to B twice as large as that of B going to A. So I'm going to change this to 0.02. So there's a 2 to 1 ratio on the rate constants. 
Well, now um, you see that um, you don't really get equilibrium until the concentration of B is twice the concentration of A. The equilibrium constant is 2. You're, you're, you're changing A to B twice as fast as you're changing B to A. So in order for them to be in equilibrium, the concentration of B has to be twice as large as the concentration of A so that they're, the, the, the moles of B going to A becomes the same as the moles of B, A going to B uh, at equilibrium. Now let's uh, make uh, the equilibrium constant the same, but let's make it uh, make the, the two rate constants a uh, factor of 10 larger. I'm going to go 0 0.2 and 0 0.1. And you can see it comes to equilibrium much faster. Uh, let's reverse, let's make this one 0 0.2 and this one 0.1. Okay, so it just reverses how it is. Now let me let me go back to um, let me go 0 0.05 and 0 0.05. Okay, it's something in between. Another game you could play uh, with this uh, uh, simulation is uh, let's see what happens if I suddenly inject some B into the reaction mixture at 100 seconds. Now this, this cell here is linked up with the, the, the 100 second cell of B and um, it just adds the value that I have here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put one molar, uh, uh, one mole per liter of B into the reaction mixture at 100 seconds. Let's see what happens. Well, I did something wrong here. I thought I had this right. All right, let me look down real quick. 100 seconds. I thought I, all right, I guess I have to add. I think it's C16. Let's see if that does it. Yeah, okay. I guess I didn't program it in. Let me make it 0.5 rather than 1. Okay, something's wrong. This is cell E16. You make these little mistakes. It should be E16. Okay. Okay, now let's make it one molar at that point. Okay, good. We're back on track. So we're in equilibrium at 99 seconds, and suddenly we add an extra mole of B into the reaction mixture. Well, now we've got uh, twice as much B as A, so B is turning to A twice as fast as A is turning to B, and so uh, the concentration of B decreases and the concentration of A increases until they come to a new equilibrium. There's an equal amount of the two, but it's not, it's not uh, one molar, it's one and a half molar because we have a total of three moles now. We started with two per liter and we added an extra one. Now, I know you can't inject negative moles, but let's suppose we pulled uh, one mole per liter of B out. Instead of putting one in, let's make it minus one. And now we've taken it out of equilibrium. And in order to get back to equilibrium, uh, the uh, A has to decrease and the B has to increase. And uh, we actually have one total mole per liter because we started with two moles per liter of B, no A. And we're subtracting one mole of B. So you can play all of these fun games. Um, Really, they're illustrations of Le Chatelier's principle. We're, we're putting a stress on the system, and the system reacts um, by going to a new state of equilibrium. We add, well, here, let's add extra B, and the system decreases the amount of B um, so as to achieve a new equilibrium, and it increases the amount of A. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this um, presentation. 
Uh, it's very easy to do um, simulations on Excel. I do it on a lot of different uh, systems and learn a lot about uh, science that way. Uh, not just chemistry, but physics and uh, even biology. Um, in a future um, video, I would like to do a reaction where you have a one to two reaction. Um, an example of this would be the dissociation of N2O4 to form 2NO2, dinitrogen tetroxide forming 2 NO2, so that type of an equilibrium, one to two, and then maybe we'll do an A plus B equals C type equilibrium as well. So thank you for your attention, and I'll see you next time.